Hi everybody, welcome to the Basic Stitch Knitting Podcast. This is episode 19. I am Celine, your host, coming to you from Hong Kong. And if you're a new viewer, welcome and thank you uh, for giving this podcast a chance. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back and thank you for staying with me. And this episode, I like to start with asking you a question. And that is as a knitter, or if you're a crocheter, although I don't crochet, I don't even, I, I mean, I, I, I like the fact that you're watching if you're a crocheter. Um, do you buy wool product? And when I say wool product, I mean like knit product. Well, I don't know, like, do you buy garment? Do you buy sweater from stores? Because I feel like, I don't know, like sometimes if I see a, a beautiful sweater, instead of buying it, I will try to deconstruct it and deconstruct it and think about how I can knit it myself, although I've never done it. And it just stopped me from buying it. It saves money and it also feels makes me feel less guilty about, you know, like being a traitor to my craft. Um, so do you feel like you're tr betraying your craft if you're buying a sweater or a knitted hat or um, mittens you know just things that you could have made it yourself you know because sometimes they are so beautiful right and the reason why i'm asking this question is because there is this particular scarf that i've been looking at for so long i've tried it on a few years ago and it's so light and warm it's 100 percent lamb's wool um but at the same time i feel like you know when it comes to wool i feel like i'm a knitter i can knit it myself i can knit a scarf i shouldn't buy it but at the same time i probably won't knit it because it's so large it's long and large and it's not exactly knitted because it's like kind of felted so i feel like i might you know the the purchase might be justifiable but i'm not sure but I'm not asking about the scarf itself. I mean, in general, how do you feel about buying knitted garment, like, you know, sweater, cardigan, or hat, and, you know, uh, socks or mittens? What do you think about it? And I will uh, choose some of your answers, response. You know, please comment down below and uh, I will choose some of them and read it out next episode. Next, I will talk about my acquisitions. It's not necessarily just Dash, but all other needy related things. They are all in front of me now and I'm so excited to talk about them with you. So um, if you like to watch Stash acquisitions and stuff like that, usually this probably will not be your favorite podcast because I don't really buy a lot of things, I don't think. And I have been... Um, trying to not buy anything since last December and I have been doing quite well I think um, you know since Black Friday I believe I did a little bit of purchase during Black Friday and since then I, I told myself not to buy any yarn although I actually need to because there are at least two whips that is like there are UFO now unfinished objects only because I have run out of yarn so I definitely need to buy more yarn for them but because I always want to save the save up the shipping cost as in you know if there's a fixed fixed shipping cost with this website I try to buy more to kind of make it feel like it's more worth it but the shipping cost is not even crazy if I buy it from like Darren Moore's or wool warehouse but it's just the very very calculating part of me that tried to make it worth it so um i tried to wait longer and you know like stack up the wish list on the website before i actually click the order so the first thing i would say that i bought for my uh ufo is this one it's nothing crazy it's cascade 220 fingering weight in the navy the color is called in the navy like on the website i think navy and in the navy is are two different colors so it's i mean i told you before it's actually more like um a brighter navy more like a marine blue i think nothing exciting but i really like uh cascade 220 so 
I mean, I've bought Cascade 220 in the worst of way before. Never actually knit a project out of it, but I've knitted um, two swatches and I've been loving them. So, <laughs> yes, this is one. And then um, I have also bought some West Yorkshire Spinners Fleece 100% Jacobs. They are so affordable. Like, um, I've been interested in Jacobs for a while. Are they actually focusing? Yes. And, um, is this 100% Jacobs? It only says 100% British wool. Let me see. Oh yeah, but it says 100% Jacobs here. <laughs> so, Jacobs is like one of the oldest breed, sheep breed in England. I need to read more about it. I mean, I read about it before, but I forget. I should do my research before this. But I'll definitely tell you more about Jacobs when I actually knit something out of this. Because I like to tell you how it feels as well. Like, it's 100% Jacobs and that is pretty rare. Because sometimes... I think people usually do like a, a mix. Focus? Okay. People usually do a, a bit of mix, I think, with Jacobs um, if they do use it. I don't think I see a lot of them. So, um, thank you, West Yorkshire Spinners, for bringing Jacobs to us because it's really one of the oldest breed and they look so funky, like with a big horn. And I just feel like, you know, we need to keep knitting with their wool to keep them alive, to keep them existing. I'm not sure if you have known this yet, but I'm not crazy about soft wool. I really, really love wool that looks like... I call it wooly, but what I actually mean is... I like a wool that is rustic and natural, not, not over-processed. It smells okay. Not crazy sheepy. Yeah. A little bit sheepy, not crazy. Um, yeah. So this is it. I actually know what I'm going to knit. This is a Jacob DK and uh, I am going to knit a shawl out of them three. Like the only reason I bought them in three skeins and not like six or one is because I have a plan in mind. It's going to be a shawl. So yes, that's it. A shawl in woolly wool. I hope I, I like them. I hope they are like the best wool in the world because they are really affordable and woolly, rustic. Yes. And then the next thing I bought is um, this. This is Drops Kit Silk from Drops. <laughs> and it is mohair and probably with some silk. 75% mohair and 25% silk. Everybody is knitting something with mohair now. Everybody. And... I've never really knit anything with mohair, never thought about it, but I'm liking the look now, suddenly. It's like fluffy and stuff. I, I'm looking forward to um, knitting something with it, and I'm going to knit Flora, this particular shade with it. I'm not even sure, because I thought, okay, I mean, usually I would pair, people would pair like a mohair with like a fingering weight yarn that is of similar color but I was like I want it to be gray I want it to be blue what about putting them together maybe it can be like a beautiful color together but I'm not so sure now I don't know how they will look together um I probably will need need a knit a swatch to see if I like them and if I really don't like how they look together I will probably need to buy like flora in another color um, and these will go to the stash I hope they look good together so 
And the next, the next acquisition is something I didn't buy but was sent to me all the way from Netherlands and this is it. This is a very, very Christmassy yarn and it is, I think it's Volboot, Volboot. It's a German yarn. It, you know, it's super Christmassy with gold Stellina. This is given to me by um, Valerie and she owns a Joyens Fiber Arts, a really, really beautiful sock blank company. And uh, she sent this to me as well. Beautiful, cute Christmas card. Um, it took her, took the, the mail, like the, the post so long to get me, um, that she thought it was lost. <laughs> it's really beautiful, but I, I'm not opening it yet because I want to keep it in here because I'm not really going to knit out of it right away. I'll probably wait a little bit when I start to feel like it's Christmas again. Thank you very much, Valerie. She knit a pair of socks out of this and she likes it so much, so she decided to to send me the the leftover. Apparently she knits like really short socks, huh? Okay, so um, that's it for yarny acquisition and I'm feeling really, really good. And next I'm going to talk about other things that's knitting related but not yarn. So I bought this one. Knit Pro um, Knit Blockers TM. Do you really need to have like a TM for knit blockers? <laughs> Whatever. So I haven't even opened it yet because I have not blocked anything. And to be fair, I don't really block things. I block things by wearing them, right? Um, wear them a couple times and then wash them and just lay flat and dry. But I'm going to open it now for you. Um, I don't know. I just feel like if I have this, I will probably want to block things more. Because sometimes when I'm using individual needles, I feel like I might stretch things differently. Like it's not straight. There might be some point where it's more pointy. I don't know. It's just what I feel about it. Ooh. Just open it. It doesn't look super high quality. Like uh, the plastic itself. Um, if I want to kill somebody, huh. there is like eight needles here, pretty dangerous. Like the kids come to my place, my neighbor kids come to my place all the time. I need to put this like way high up. And these are the smaller ones, like eight smaller ones and... 12 bigger ones. I think this is like 20 pounds. I mean 12 pounds. Very, very reasonable for what it is, I think. So yes, I'm going to be a better blocker. And next I bought Knit Pro Zing. I have brought I have bought Knit Pro Zing 2.5 milliliter millimeters. Um, circular needles but recently I'm thinking going down a size for my socks because I wanted them to be more sturdy not that they are proven to be not sturdy enough but I feel like my gauge is kind of loose um, so I'm trying I'm going to two millimeters and I want to try to use DPNs for the first time in my life and I heard so many good things about it pro needles like like affordable, durable, good. So um, yeah, and actually I could choose to use 2.25, but the reason why I'm using two is because uh, Knit Pro Zings are, you know, indicated by the colors and I want it to be pink and that superficial reason is sufficient for me to choose two millimeter over 2.25 because I don't think they're gonna be, you know, much difference anyway. And then I've also bought this uh, Drops Classic Fixed Circular Needles. I'm not sure. I've never heard of it at all but I saw it and I decided to give it a try because what if it's good? Um, it's pretty reasonable. Uh, it's cheap. Because um, if I'm going to teach children's to knit, I want to 
try to in the long term try to let them have like better needles but not like expensive because I probably need to pay like <laughs> I don't know out of my own income so uh, try to choose something you know find a balance between good and expensive or cheap I don't know so this is six millimeter needle because I don't have it I think I don't have it so I can you know it's like an addition to my collection anyway and then there's an app called sorry if it feels like I'm rushing because I am because my phone is always telling me I don't really have much storage left um, there's an app in Hong Kong it's called Carousel and you can buy secondhand things from them and I saw these selling for like 60 Hong Kong dollars which is like six pounds I'm not even sure if they're good but they come in all different sizes just look at how blunt these are can you see this and this oh my god but maybe it's good for a child because they're not going to poke their eyes with it right um and then I bought this one. Oh my god, it's so cute. So basically, it's like an all-in-one thingy. It's like Knit Pro, what is it called? Knitting needle and crochet gauge with yarn cutter. And it's like in the color of blush. So these are where you can put, put your needle through to check the size of the needles, so you know what it is. And then this part is for you to check your gauge. And then there is like a little yarn cutter here. I love things that's compact. Only that, I don't know why, I didn't read online how big it actually is. I thought it's going to be like really small. Don't know what I'm thinking. So it's actually surprisingly big, but it's still pretty okay. And it looks like a elephant. A knitting book. I have never owned a knitting book before. And it is the famous Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible. I have seen this everywhere. I thought I will never need it because I am not a crazy lace cable person yet. But I've seen it um, in last or second last episode of Bakery Bear's podcast and Kay shows us hers and like, you know, shows us a little bit of the inside and it was gorgeous. Gorgeous. I'm going to show you a little bit. Just randomly, you know, upside down. I have not even really looked into it yet because I have it sent it to my home. And, um, ooh, look at that. Edgings, you know, different types of edgings. Um, yeah, I haven't actually read it. But it's not even that expensive. I thought it's going to be expensive because it's such a big book with a lot of resources in there. But I guess um, the one, because the one that I'm buying is not the hardcover, but like a paperback, it's way cheaper than what I thought. It's like around a little bit more than 200 Hong Kong dollars, which you think, you know, probably 20 pounds. Okay, I'm translating everything to pounds only because... Um, one pound is approximately 10 Hong Kong dollars, but yesterday when I last checked, it's 11, like one pound is to 11 Hong Kong dollars. And it irritates me because, not because it's now more expensive for me to buy things from England, which is where I buy everything, but because it's hard for me to do the calculation now. I mean, I, I probably care more about the calculation bit than how much it actually is worth like I like to see like 20 pound and be able to think ah it's 200 Hong Kong dollars you know it was like that for me back then when I was studying in Italy like one euro was one 10 Hong Kong dollars and I felt really nice because calculation has never been easier I'm really bad at math and and I guess the reason why I like to buy a lot of things from England is because I can see clearly the value of things. Like, oh, that's a hundred Hong Kong dollars. Instead of, you know, like for US dollar, one US dollar is like 7.85. I don't remember. 
um, there's a pact between US dollar and Hong Kong dollars. Um, but that calculation is difficult for me, so that's why I've never actually really bought anything from US. And also the shipping from US are usually way more expensive, I don't know why. Um, yes, that's it for stash acquisition. Hope you enjoyed it. I mean, it's not crazy, but be I'm like so excited about every single thing that I, I bought and shown you. Um, I probably should talk more about this, but because I haven't really even like read through it, so I feel dishonest if I have to say anything about it. But this is um, Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible by Hitomi Shira, and I'm pre pretty sure a lot of people have talked about it before. So, yes. <laughs> I hope to really get something out of it. So, at Min Stuff, um, last episode I have drawn uh, the winner for this bag. I've put it in Ikea bag so it's perfectly clean and pristine and it's Rosia by Lily bag. It has been with me forever. I really want it to be out of my house now. Like not because I don't like it but because I want it to go to one of you ASAP. But unfortunately the person that I've drawn uh, last episode hasn't come forward yet with her address so um, yeah I talked to Laura from the Tiny Human Knits podcast, which is one of the podcasts that I watch very regularly. And she agrees that, you know, it should go to a viewer because it should, it will definitely make his or her day if it's a viewer who receives um, the gift, you know, versus somebody who has never felt any connection to this podcast. So I want the happiness of this giveaway to be maximized so that, you know, this project bag is, you know, it attaches more meaning to the giveaway so I want to make sure it's one of our viewers who get it so I have put this into I've recycled the gift and I've drawn another winner and the winner is here look at the screen if you are not um, and I am thinking if this time again uh, the winner hasn't come forward to give me her address I'm probably going to do another giveaway like to to maybe do it over this podcast I mean uh, comment section or do it over Ravelry group because that's probably better I mean it might be unfair to those people who got into the giveaway through Ravel uh, Instagram but it probably is a better way of doing it from now on um, to do the giveaway over YouTube or Ravelry um, yeah, I hope it's understandable. I hope you're not thinking, you know, it's being unfair to people. So again, it's waiting for you, okay? And then I'm so excited to announce a pattern giveaway that is so generously donated by the designer herself. And it is a Frozen Harbor shawl designed by Ines Seng. I think that's how your name is supposed to be pronounced. Ines Seng. I'm going to write it down here. And she is I'm, I've read it, Yumi Rumi Knits over um, Instagram. And go and check out her Instagram feed if you like to look at beautiful, cozy photos. Um... The, the pattern giveaway uh, is this like shawl that I'm going to put the picture in and when I first saw the post on Instagram, I, I, I liked how it looks and then I read the caption. It was so beautiful. The inspiration behind the shawl was so beautiful. I would encourage you to go to her Instagram feed to read the original post but I've also printed it out so that I can read it to you in case you're lazy. So this is what she said. I'm not really good at reading by the way. I've never done it you know in my life. I was never required to do it when I was a kid. So first I was eyeing this yarn for more than a year before finally buying it. And then the inspiration. The eerie, quiet, and beautiful sight of frozen shoreline of Gulf of Baltic Sea in Latvia, where I grew up. It's not every year that the Gulf shoreline freezes up. It's rare. It's magical. And all you want to do is stay there in that moment, subconsciously waiting, 
but not hearing a single wave crushing. It's almost mind-bending. I kept relieving these sights and memories while knitting the shawl, and now that it's done, I feel like I'm almost missing something. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Ines actually designed the yarn in six balls of DK weight yarn, but it's a little bit tricky because when you look at the skein of yarn, the yarn that she uses, the yardage actually suggests that's not exactly DK. It's like, um, it's Angora Gold Pulu by a brand, I think it's called Alize or Elise. I'm going to put it down here. I think it's a Turkish brand or Latvian brand. And I don't know how I can, you know, mix it up, but I don't really remember. I looked at the the website that provides that kind of brand. Um, I can put the website URL down in the info box or the show notes because I actually asked Inez about it. I was like, you know, do I need to use a DK weight yarn because the yardage of this Pulu yarn, is it called Pulu? Yeah, Angora Gold Pulu doesn't look like DK. And she said, it's probably categorized as DK because it has that fluff that will fill up the um, the space. So basically it's DK because it has the mohair there, like the, the fluff there. So just now I showed you um, this, right? And I actually intend to knit this shawl out of this and this, like what I told you. But I'm not sure. I will, I'm going to knit a little swatch first. Just a very little one to just to see if they go well together. Not to see the gauge. I don't care about the gauge. So I hope they look good together. So if you're interested in knitting this yarn, uh, this pattern, um, I would say you can go if and if you don't, if you can't find the original yarn that is suggested by the pattern, you can try going for a fingering weight and a mohair. Um, lace weight yarn and that would probably be good. The Angora Golopulu yarn has sequins. Is it called sequins? Sequins? I don't know. I, I, sec, sequins? I'll just call it sequins for now until I check and then if I'm wrong I'll correct myself but you know I'm, I'm wrong. Um, I feel like, you know, I, I never like sequins. I feel like I just associated it with some really really like, you know, you wear a sequins dress when you go to the dance floor or sing some really old-fashioned songs. Um, but this sequins in this yarn in grey color is like the most tasteful sequins yarn I've ever seen in my life. And it just goes so well with the, the pattern because the pattern has this little like, you know, things that reminds me of ripples of the sea on, you know, or wave, very, very gentle ones. And um, it just reminds me of those like sparkling reflection on a deep, dark sea. Unfortunately though, when I go to the, when I went to the website, I don't think I could find a yarn. I mean, in the exact same color. So I decided I'm going for, you know, like fingering weight and, and uh, kit silk mohair. Also, as an effort to participate in this uh, kit silk hair mohair craze that's going on. I mean, I've, most people are using like the Rowan kit silk, right? I think it's called kit silk haze, but that is a little bit too expensive for someone who has never knit with mohair and for someone who doesn't know whether she actually likes mohair. I'm definitely not allergic to it, thank God, but I'm not sure how I like it. Um, so I, I think drops kit, drop kit silk is a good way to start. Um, yep. I've personally bought the pattern because I just feel like I really re I really enjoy reading the inspiration of the of the shawl, and I feel like by knitting. Um, the shawl, I can get, you know, like get that kind of calm and peaceful image when, whenever I wear the shawl. Oops. Okay. So, um, I really want to knit it. And if you're interested in knitting it, uh, 
this is a chance you can win a pattern. I mean, I would totally buy it, but this is a chance you can win a pattern. And I'm just going to check what this is. Okay, it's difficult to try to keep everything clean, although the rest of my room is a mess. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, if you would like to win the pattern, you can go to my Ravelry group and enter the giveaway. There will be a question for you to answer, a very easy one, and I will draw the winner randomly in our next episode. Speaking of combining um, mohair yarn and the fingering weight yarn, or just mohair yarn with something else, like the combination thing, I would just think about the very, very popular pattern that is, you know, all all the rage now, and it is called the No Frail Sweater. I first learned about the sweater from a podcast that I watch also regularly, but I don't really understand because it's a Norwegian podcast, I believe, or Danish. Um, but at least I know how to pronounce their podcast name, and it's called Strick Therapy. Therapy? Strictotherapy, and I think it's mean. It means knitting therapy. I am so bad at the pronunciation. Strictotherapy, or oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, so it's a it's a it's a podcast that I watch, and although I don't actually know what they're saying, I just really enjoy their aesthetics, and I learned about no frill sweater from them. But so far, it just looks like a very raglan sweater so if you're if you've knitted or if you actually speak norwegian and the podcasters actually talked about why they loved the sweater i don't know if you know why it's such a popular pattern can you let me know maybe it's like a really really good raglan design but so far it just looks really basic to me which is not a bad thing but you know there's a lot of like free pattern teaching you how to knit your own raglan sweater right so yeah i'm just curious not saying it's not good because so far it's been looking really good it's basic simple but i don't know why everybody is knitting it okay so my phone is totally irritating me because it keeps saying the storage is going to be full so i need to be quick and this is going to be a shorter episode hopefully like with me talking because i like to put in a little bit of clips of uh, me spending my time in Thailand with Jaro over the Christmas. Oh my god, it's so long time ago. Please just ignore the fact that it was over the Christmas. Just act like I just went there last week and, you know, be really diligent and then, you know, share my life with you, a little bit of my life with you. And it's like a beautiful place. So, yep. Um, now I'm going to talk about my first and only finished object and that is dum 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 Ooh. right okay let's not talk about this and this this is the pair of socks that I've been knitting forever for my dad and it's definitely not matching and I do not care. It's a toe up sock and um fish lips kiss heel two by two ribbing and Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. I knit it with 2.5 millimeter needles and I needed two at the same time and um, look at that I like how autumnal it is and uh, what else I think I knit six seventy two stitches and I have also soaked it and did not block it because I don't have a uh, sock blocker. Basically, I soaked it, I dried it um, by rolling a towel over it and then I just lay flat and let it dry. And there is still like the... it's not a letter but you can see a line there, can you? Like there's a very distinctive line here and this is where I do like change needles. I do circle, magic circle knitting. I mean, it's definitely not a leather but it's just there. You know, I it's so interesting because if I bring it closer, you can see it's definitely not a leather. I, I mean leather. 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 Not leather. So there is no leather. But 
there is just a very distinctive line. Which I think will go away with wearing and I don't really care. And I feel like, you know, like a lot of podcasters, they just need two pairs of, you know, show you guys two pairs of socks every single episode. And they are like filming every two weeks. I don't know how they do it, but I can't. Um, and also they are humongous, okay? These are like men socks. So to be fair, they are huge. Aren't they huge? And this is like when I dropped a stitch and I need to secure it later on by doing like duplicate stitch here and then go through it, duplicate stitch. Not the funnest thing to do, but it has to be done. So my dad will need, will have like warm feet now. This is a pair of socks and the yarn. Um, I do not remember because I don't have the ball band with me, but I can write it down um, here or in my uh, show notes, okay? Well, I washed this and when I washed it with detergent, um, it bled and basically it's a blue bit that bled and I was like, ooh, okay, but it didn't actually bled through like uh, the yellow bit and... After soaking it in detergent, I rinse it off and the second wash, the water um, ran clear, so it's fine. And that is my only whip and I have prepared to secure that stitch already by threading a darning needle through the remaining yarn. That's how much I got left out of 100% gram of yarn. Okay, so that's my only whip, I mean only uh, Evo. And then my second whip, I have been really, really monogamous and this is my second whip. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, it looks that it's looking a little bit awkward because of a needle situation. Um, I have literally just separated the sweater and these are the armhole, right? Let me sh see how to show you. So this is the front bit and lace and color work and armhole one, armhole two here. Oh, I can't show it. So yeah, I knit it in the second smallest size and I believe these will grow like crazy, I believe, right? upon blocking or else I'm I don't know what to do <laughs> so yeah the yarn that I use the green bit again it's holst garn by uh, it's holst garn and the color weighs Moreland and the color the yarn for this one is Temi Wee color I've got this bit left after knitting this and also um, my Lilu hat by Caitlin Hunter, which is the same designer. This is the Zweig pattern and it's designed by Kaylin Hunter, who is Violin Knitworks on um, Instagram. And it's looking great. And I've been enjoying it so much. And I'm not sure if you can see, there's a little bit of pulling here. It's not as obvious in the camera. Since I've been really monogamous about this uh, sweater so far, I really don't have anything else to show you. Um, yeah, but I did cast on <laughs> a little square and uh, can you see what that is? It is my first brioche attempt. Ooh la la, I've I've, I haven't blocked it yet and for some reason, um, I'm not sure if you can see it, like the middle part is very holy. I guess it's because I use a stitch marker that is slightly bigger than appropriate. Um, yeah. Oh my god, I am obsessed. I mean, this is very small, okay, but the setup is a little bit, um, you know, you need a lot of attention when you're doing this setup cast on row. Um, I think it's a I-court cast on and 
you know, I, the first time I tried it, I almost finished it and then I made a mistake. I don't know what the mistake was. I, you know, I've never knit brioche before. I've never succeeded before. I tried to watch video and I could never understand. But this pattern that I have not told you and I do not have the printed version with me is called Brioche Memories designed by Valerie, which is my friend who owns Giants Fiber Arts. Um... It's a really good design and it's supposed to be uh, a blanket, like brioche memory blanket. But I don't think I'm going to make a blanket because I'm not like a patchwork person when it comes to blanket. So uh, I probably will knit like one, two, three and like nine thingy. And use it as a, I don't know, pot holder. Or just anything. I just want to try to knit brioche. And this is such a good project to learn to knit brioche. I mean, it's not like pure brioche. There is like brioche increasing, left leaning, oh, decreasing, I think. Left leaning, decreasing, and left lean, uh, right leaning, decreasing. Um, but if I can manage it, I think you can manage it. So it's a really good paid for pattern that I would pay for and I paid for so you know disclaimer um yeah I I am addicted like I basically made a mistake and had to frog it because I was on a boat what was I thinking and I immediately cast it on again because I know I want to make sure I do learn it this time and also it's so addictive like the first part where I did not come like did not made a mistake it was so fun I got into the groove. I know why people like brioche so much. So, yes. Is it brioche or brioche? I don't know. So, yes. Um, I am knitting this with Drops uh, cotton yarn, which I do have. I'm going to show you. Saffron. 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 And it's the color 09, like the navy color. I originally bought this with the red one and the white one because I wanted to knit the... Um, the the Marius pot holder that is designed by mm, focus designed by Skandier Knits and it's a free pattern, but I just put it off and I I'm not really sure about the idea of knitting color work using cotton yarn, so I just didn't never got to ne never get to use it. But this year is a year of knitting from your stash. I mean, every year is an, a year of knitting from mustache, but there's a lot of kale um, and that I'm going to participate because one of the resolution, knitting resolution this year for me is that I'm going to win all the kale prizes. <laughs> How can you make a resolution on something that you have zero control over? At least I can participate, right? So, um, yes, this is it. And I'm, I'm going to knit like, you know, blue, red, white, and then, you know, like white, blue, red, yeah, whatever. Um, oh, I can't wait to, to start to knit the second square. Um, this is going to be one that has no, no seam or whatever. Um, and it looks pretty on both sides. But right now, I'm just really addicted to this, so I will knit this first, I think, and maybe in order to show you something, I might even cast on a pair of socks. Who knows? Because I really want to try using my DPNs. And um, I'm sorry, uh, the, the nitty bit knitting content of this episode is not a lot because I just really want to keep it short i want to show you a little bit of clips of me in thailand and also because my phone is not really cooperating in terms of its storage space um i hope you enjoyed it and i um hope to see you again pretty soon and please if you're a winner of this bag rosia by lily bag please come forward and also, and also don't forget to head over to the Ravelry group and um, participate uh, in the giveaway for the harbor, frozen harbor um, pattern. And please only participate 
if you intend to knit it because I don't want the pattern to go to waste. I really want people to add a project page to the design. So that's it for today and I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again very soon. Thank you and goodbye. Ooh, where are we going? Sun de Pier. What? Sun de Pier. Sun de Pier. Followed by PP, followed by Colanta. Okay. It's a hot summer's day. Very, very hot. Oh, there's an elephant. But why though? Why? What is it? Ay ay ay! <laughs> Why do you look so grumpy when you were squeezing the lemon or lime? <laughs> oh my god, this makes me want to paint so much and I want to learn how to paint glasses particularly. Is that egg and banana together? Uh, yeah. Did you order the egg? Or they just go together? I don't know. It's a chocolate. Uh, yeah, maybe chocolate on top. Hmm. 
Finishing torch. Too close. <laughs> Every day. Actually, the line between the very light, like pale ish blue, and the dark navy is very, very stark. Does that mean it's like shallow and immediately very deep? It's not very deep. It's like, yeah, it's certainly deep. Waiting for a boat to come. So, are they coming on this boat? Oh, we're getting off. We're getting off to that boat? Yeah. Oh. Why do you talk as if it's like a common sense? I 
selfie stick so oh much. Oh my god, look at the dragon. What dragon? The Komodo. Right? Where, where, where? See down the river? Oh! <gasps> oh my god. We're gonna take a photo. So we're saying goodbye to the hotel. Back to Il Mare. Il Mare. Il Mare. And we oh, are oh, going oh, to the pier. Oh sh yeah. Oh, what to disturb them? It's for the restaurant to eat. Okay. What did you order again? Spicy. Uh, okay. Three chilies. Crab done. Dang. <laughs> Three chilies. Alright. So this is Thai milk tea. I'm not actually sure what's Thai tea to start with. Tomato juice. Tomato juice, are you sure? And this is banana smoothie yes. for uh, the very very boring man. It's good. Should I actually stir it? I think yes. No, I'll try the first bit first. Yes. Absolutely winning. Oh. Mmm. Ah. You gonna stir it? It tastes like it has milk already. Oh, this is good. This is good. I think you should try it. Please excuse that. Oh, it smells like tea. It's good. It's like very, very strong. It's like yin, 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 yin. yin. What is that? Yin yang. Um, yin yang. Yin yang. Yeah, it tastes like it has milk in milk yeah. in it already, right? But the milk is like there, supposedly. We ask if I'm gonna mix it. I hope it's not condensed milk. Of course it will be. Let me try, let me try. If it's condensed milk, I'm not having... Oh my god, it is condensed milk, I think. Mm. Oh my god, my hair. <laughs> okay. So I believe it's like... I like it.